Hey everyone, and welcome to What Did I Miss, where today I am counting down my top 10 favorite episodes from Star Trek The Next Generation. Of all the lists I have done, this one may have been the hardest, as I had forgotten how many good episodes of The Next Generation there actually were. You have to understand that I was first introduced to The Next Generation when I was 8 years old, and I got to watch it every week for 7 seasons, so it almost feels like part of my upbringing took place on the Enterprise D. As I did a rewatch of these episodes and others, it really did amaze me how quickly I remember those old times. Like the feeling you get when you walk into a comic book store and smell the print, and it makes you feel young again. As the captain of some other Enterprise might say. But I also looked at these from the view of a conscientious objector and tried to pick out the 10 episodes that not only I love, but also showed the best parts of what this series stood for. My name is Eric and I really appreciate you clicking on this video, and if you do enjoy it and want to support the channel, you can hit that like button. Here I cover all the sci-fi things I love, especially Star Trek, but also other stuff like Godzilla vs Kong and the upcoming Aliens and Matrix releases, so hit that subscribe button as well if you are new to the channel. I also have another channel where I cover more of the superhero genre named WDIM+, and I will link that in the description as well. Before I get into the video, I also want to announce that I'm running a contest until April 30th, 2021, and two supporters of the channel are going to get these limited edition Captain Kirk Funko Pops. On May 1st of 2021, I will pick one random commenter that is a subscriber and one person who has joined the new WDIM Discord server. So all that you have to do to be entered is to be a subscriber to this channel and comment on a video from now until April 30th, 2021. And you can join the Discord server and be entered there as well. This gives everyone a lot of chances to win and if we get 50 people to join the Discord server, I will add another Funko Pop to that prize. This is always more fun for me when I hear what you think, so let me know in the comments what your favorite Next Generation episodes are, because I know that my list is not the only list, and I would love to hear why you love this show that I love as well. And just to give a frame of reference, I tried to grade the episodes on a few things, such as how good of an episode each one was just as an episode of good TV, as well as what the events mean to the history and universe of Star Trek, and of course my own prejudice. Hey, I never said I was Picard, and I I'm probably closer to Captain Benjamin Sisko, and you know what? I can live with that. Okay, so let's get into my top 10 list of Star Trek The Next Generation episodes of all time. Tapestry I think the Tapestry is the perfect episode to start this list with, because it really is a showcase of its star, Captain Jean-Luc Picard, in a science fiction-based, what might have been, storyline. When Star Trek is at its best, it's able to use the genre and tell familiar stories, but tell a message that also develops the characters and makes them seem more familiar to the viewer. Captain Picard has always been portrayed as a very stoic man, even when he and the rest of the crew got drunk that one time, and seeing him just out of the academy really added a dimension to the character that I think finally makes you feel closer to the role. By season 6, we have seen a lot of things happen to this man and shape the character we have seen to this point, but Tapestry shows us the man before we first meet him on the bridge of the Enterprise and see that he was a brash young man who was pushed by a father who did not believe in him. Add to this a fantastic performance by the most beloved guest star of the next generation, John Delancey as Q. The story gives him a chance to play a type of Jacob Marley character and pop up throughout the episode to taunt Picard, but once again when given the chance, Q shows Picard immense compassion and brings him back to the living. It is also interesting that when this episode first aired, it aired the week after the Deep Space Nine episode q -less. so I like to think that Q just jumped from DS9 to the Enterprise during this time. Darmok a great example of Star Trek adapting a known story and making it their own, Darmok is often cited as one of the best episodes of Star Trek ever produced. Even Jean-Luc Picard himself, Patrick Stewart, has praised the episode and its retelling of the Gilgamesh story that he in fact references in this episode, and as well as the acting of guest star Paul Winfield. This of course was the second time Winfield had been in a Star Trek project, having played the ill-fated Captain Terrell in The Wrath of Khan, but this character was unlike almost any other scene during the franchise. We also get to see the diplomatic side of Picard, and it stands as another example as to why he is the captain of the flagship of the Federation. Seeing these two characters try to work together and communicate really touched on an important issue with meeting new cultures, which Star Trek has always been able to kind of MacGuffin out of their stories with the use of a device known as the Universal Translator. But if and when we do ever meet aliens from another world, it will probably go a lot like this. The methodology and metaphor that filled this episode is what Gene Roddenberry's vision for Star Trek really was, and is why this episode was referenced as an example of this during his funeral, which unfortunately occurred the same year, further cementing the importance of of this episode in the history of the franchise. Cause and Effect Another great sci-fi trope, cause and effect puts the crew of the Enterprise D in a time loop in which they continually are destroyed until they are able to figure out a way to free themselves. I remember when this episode first aired and it showed the Enterprise being destroyed in the teaser and in fact in the beginning stinger that is all you basically see and that just starts this episode on the ground running so well. We also get to see the crew work together to fix an impossible problem which is a hallmark of the series. Seeing the crew devise a plan in which Data is able to discern and complete is really fun to watch and we get some great poker scenes too. Another 
hallmark of the series. It is also fun to for once know more than the characters you are watching, and the episode does a great job making each scene a bit different than the one before it, so as it goes along you feel the progression of the storyline. I also love the ending in which we see an out of time USS Bozeman, who believes they are somewhere in between the time of the original movie and the Wrath of Khan, enter into the current time and be captained by Kelsey Grammer. Again, but this was before the internet when things actually happened that were a surprise, so this was like Star Trek The Next Generation's Luke Skywalker moment, so to speak. The Inner Light Another episode of The Next Generation that shows Picard what might have been, The Inner Light adds a shocking twist to the ending that solidifies the episode as a fixture in the history of the character. Honestly, I think that the show did not spend enough time after this episode showing what the effects of living out an entire lifetime that did not happen would have on a person, but perhaps by this point they figured that so much had happened to Picard that it all kind of balled up together inside of it. This episode was actually my favorite for a while, but I find that after you have seen it and know how it ends, it kind of doesn't age well, like most stories with the twist ending. But I love that we get to see what Picard would have been like as a family man and also get to see his actual son who plays his son in the episode. The episode does another thing that good Star Trek does and that is tell a story about a current issue, in this case global warming, and do it without being overbearing and taking away from the pure enjoyment of the piece. The ending is probably one of the best in the series the first time you watch it and I remember it sticking with me and thinking how crazy it would be to be awoken from a dream that lasted 30 years and to know everyone you loved didn't exist. It's a chilling experience that the producers like so much they borrowed it again for an episode of Deep Space Nine named Hard Time, in which O'Brien lives out 20 years in his head in a prison cell. But Inner Light stands as a well-written storyline that shows the audience a side of Picard that is rarely seen. Elementary, Dear Data Elementary Dear Data is one of those fun Star Trek episodes that takes the characters out of their element and drops them into even more fantastic circumstances while taking the audience along for the ride. Full disclosure, Data is my favorite character on the series, and when I was younger I always wanted to be Riker but knew I was Data. Add to that, Sherlock Holmes was something my father read to me, so having Data be a fan of the character felt almost like the show was speaking directly to me. I knew both worlds, and seeing them collide on screen in a story that was just as believable for both genres is chicken soup for my soul. I also love the move from the third to fourth act, in which Moriarty hands Data a drawing of the Enterprise, and Data realizes that the game now truly is afoot. Brent Spiner is able to communicate so much emotion to the audience, while barely showing any, that we feel his anticipation and then his anxiety throughout. It's also brilliant how the plot is set up with LaForge attempting to stand up for his friend against the taunting of Dr. Pulaski, but one missed word leads him to the brink of real danger. Daniel Davis also makes his first appearance as the Moriarty character and is able to transcend the role from the Holmesian style to a villain that feels right in this universe. Yesterday's Enterprise one thing that most Star Trek series do that the Next Generation crew never did was venture to the Mirror Universe. And I always felt like yesterday's Enterprise was the closest the fans get to seeing what a Mirror Universe crew on the Enterprise D would look like. In fact, I think some of the design of this universe's uniforms was used for the design of the Mirror Universe uniform. It's fun to see different takes on the characters we know, and I'm sure that is a lot of fun for the cast as well. We also get to see the Enterprise C, which had yet to be referenced or seen on screen yet, and would be featured four years before the Enterprise B was seen in Star Trek Generation. In this episode, the writers take a common sci-fi trope, which in this case is the butterfly effect or how one event can shape a future, and land it with a storyline that feels natural in this universe. It also plays a part in showing the audience that the development of this universe didn't all happen on screen, and that there are plenty of events that made the Federation what it is. But the thing that really cements this episode as a favorite is the return of Tasha Yar, and to see her interact with Guinan and learn of her place in this timeline. Speaking of Guinan, she also plays a major role in the events of the story, and it further develops her enigmatic character and her relationship with Picard. The Measure of a Man there is probably no better episode of Star Trek that tackles the moral issue of the human condition better than The Measure of a Man. This episode is frequently cited as one that perfectly dissects the issue of representation on both sides and how these difficult conversations are ones that must continue in order for a society to evolve. It also adds the tension of having Riker play the part of a prosecutor against his friends, supporting ideas that he himself does not truly believe in order to ultimately serve his friend's best interests. I think that my favorite part of the episode is when Data tells Riker at the end how he understands how this wounded him so that Data could still fight on. That along with Data keeping a hologram of Tasha Yar show the audience that in the second season how close Data is to humanity and it is a journey that the audience will follow for years to come. In a way, the storyline started in this episode continues right into the series Star Trek Picard as Bruce Maddox and his role in this universe after the events of this episode is revealed to have huge consequences. But in the end, it stands as an episode to be contemplated upon and may have the strongest message of any the next generation has ever produced. The best of both worlds. 
I've always loved the two-part episode The Best of Both Worlds and what is arguably the best cliffhanger of any two-part episode in the history of Star Trek. Once again, I remember watching these episodes when they first aired and hearing Riker say fire and then hearing that music rocked me. Mr. Worf. Fire. I didn't know this at the time, but apparently there was a chance that Patrick Stewart would not return for the fourth season, which adds even more weight to the cliffhanger. But this episode was shown to impact Picard and the rest of the Star Trek universe more than any episode of The Next Generation, as the results of the Battle of Wolf 359 would have lasting effects and consequences. Not only did it continue to shape Picard, but we learned that it is also the battle in which Commander Sisko loses his wife and almost loses his faith in Starfleet. It also showed how formidable a foe the Borg are, as they are easily able to abduct a captain off the bridge of his ship, and one Borg vessel is able to nearly decimate the entire fleet and attack Earth, something even the deadliest of Star Trek villains have not been able to do. This is also a great episode for the development of Riker, and it shows the great man in him beginning to emerge in the midst of this crisis, as well as the devotion he feels to the crew. This is really one of the most pivotal episodes of the franchise, and you'd be hard to find any other that had as much effect on the Star Trek universe as this one. Encounter at Farpoint in my opinion, no other series has as good a pilot episode as The Next Generation did with Encounter at Farpoint. The amount of world building that occurs within this episode is immense, but as a viewer you kind of feel like a kid at a theme park just looking in wonder at all the new rides. The episode is paced brilliantly as we are steadily introduced to each character, some of their idiosyncrasies and their backstories, while navigating a great sci-fi story with a message. Everything about the episode makes you feel like you want to know more, which is exactly the point of Star Trek and venturing to the stars to begin with. But John Delancey as Q in this episode really sets the bar not only for his character, but for this new universe as one filled with things we won't immediately understand, but should take seriously. I remember watching this episode as a kid and just being blown away that something like this even existed, as prior to this I had been watching the movies and the original series, but this felt so fresh and vibrant. The courtroom scenes really harken back to the original series, and it is no doubt that it is because of the involvement of DC Fontana and Gene Roddenberry in the production of this episode. The fan side of me still thinks this is my favorite episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, and watching it is always a joy. Chain of Command. Without a doubt, I believe that Chain of Command is the best episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, because even for a two-part episode, it carries the strongest two plots of any episode of the series. Not only do you have the incarceration and torture of Picard by Gol Madred, played masterfully by frequent Star Trek collaborator David Werner, but you also have Captain Jellicoe, played by Ronnie Cox, taking over the Enterprise during this time. I always say that this story works better as a movie than Star Trek Insurrection, which is actually a movie, because the story just progresses so well throughout, and you really are enthralled with both plots. Both guest stars really nail their roles too, as you feel like they have been these characters for some time, but in both cases, this is their only appearance. The scenes with Picard and Madrid, though, are really on another level to anything that we usually see in Star Trek, as Picard is put in a situation that once again tests the very man he is against a foe that seems indestructible to the audience. This back and forth is really bone chilling, and Patrick Stewart displays some of the finest acting of anyone to wear a Starfleet uniform. This episode tries to bring the Enterprise down from within and without, but in the end the cast is able to rise above and be the shining beacons of hope that we love to follow. Well, this is my list of the best episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation, but you let me know, what did I miss? I would love to see your top 10 list of Next Generation episodes in the comments below. And remember, when you create that comment, it enters you into a giveaway as long as you are subscribed, and you can also join my new Discord server for another chance to win. Thank you for clicking on this video, and I will see you next time on What Did I Miss?